Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the wise men had left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you and escape into Egypt and stay there until I tell you, because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up and, taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod was dead. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, and in Bethlehem and its surrounding district, he had all the male children killed who were two years old or under, reckoning by the date he had been careful to ask the wise men. It was then that the words spoken through the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loudly lamenting. It was Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. The good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is light and in him there is no darkness. Yet, beloved in Christ, darkness continues to be real for the children of the world. Darkness rears its head in children who are killed and wounded or displaced in war, in war-torn territories. Darkness raises its head in children who have become refugees at very young and tender and innocent age. Many have to cross treacherous and dangerous high seas. Many drown as a result of being refugees. Darkness continues to plague the lives of girls who are deprived of, of formal education. Boys engaged in slave labor children exposed early in life to drugs and pornography. Darkness continues to plague the unborn children deprived of life. Children showered with material things yet deprived of parental warmth and compassion and love. Beloved in, this, beloved in Christ, in this global context, Today's Feast of the Holy Innocence is an important one. It is a reminder to all of us, and it serves three purposes. Number one, today's feast reminds us, or it's an opportunity for us to honor and celebrate the weakness of children who died in order to save one child so that that one child can die in order to save all of us. And that is why the church considers them, though they are unnamed, the church considers them martyrs because they were the ones who died. They offered a, a, a distraction, so to speak, so that one child could be saved. And so it's so important the church sees the need to honor and celebrate their lives so that they become a model for us, a model for us that we need to die in order to save others. The second purpose of this feast, beloved in Christ, is that like Rachel, the world, you and I continue to weep and grieve of the suffering and killing of millions of children throughout the world. Rama, where Rachel weep, is a town about nine kilometers north of Jerusalem. It was the place where the exiled were gathered and forced like animals, forced to gather before their deportation to Babylon. 
They were treated like animals in the way that the Africans were, 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 were carted and, and placed in, in closed uh, prisons in Calabar on the west coast of Africa before ship, being shipped to the, to the so-called New World. But there are still Ramas that continue to exist today. There are new Ramas today where children are experiencing, where children are being killed. And not only are there new Ramas, but there is a new Rachel that exists. The church is the new Rachel. The church continues to cry out for the millions of children who are suffering and dying. So the church, you and I, we must weep, we must cry for these children because our tears remind the world of their suffering. And third, the purpose of this feast is to remind us that out of the blood of these innocent martyrs rises a child who is the light that is going to save the world and save the children of the world. This light, this child is the light. He's full of wisdom, beauty, power, compassion, and holiness. That's why he's considered light. And so the missionary challenge, beloved in Christ, that is given to us today is that if you and I develop a relationship with this child, who is the light and who has no darkness, then our relationship with others, especially children, must be governed by wisdom, compassion, beauty, power, and, and holiness. We must be like the light, Jesus Christ. If, we have, if you and I have this relationship with Christ, then we would have no other option to ensure that our mission, the mission of the church, our personal mission is to ensure, is to work for the protection of our children, to ensure that laws are enshrined in constitutions of countries that protect our children, that institutions are developed and formed that will nurture our children, and that we remember those children who are killed. We have no other option. This feast reminds us that we have a mission and we have a commitment to protect every child from the child in the womb to the child who is born. If we have a relationship with the light, that child Jesus. So on this feast day, we pray God's blessing on all the children of the world, but especially on the children who are being killed and the children who are suffering today. May God's blessing come upon them. May God's blessing enable them to rise as did the child Jesus who rose from the dead. Amen.